Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new studio. With this video I'm starting a new series about Python and it will be about Pygame. Pygame is a Python's library for creating really simple 2D games. So we are starting our game now. If you like the content I'm posting on this channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to smash that like button. If you'd like to be notified when I post more amazing content, also check that bell icon. Now let's start with our video. If you had somewhat of interesting childhood or just didn't live behind the rock, you probably heard about the world's hardest game. This game was really popular a couple of years ago and probably drove a lot of people crazy because of its simplicity and really hard gameplay. Anyway, this is the game that we are gonna develop today. If you watched my series on PyQt5 on developing Python UI applications, this will be a nice upgrade. I would suggest that you have basic knowledge about Python or at least programming in general before diving into the Py game. I will assume that you have already installed Python, but if you don't, you can see my first video in series of PyQt5 where I show you how to install it. Now let's jump into the interesting part. First thing we need is to install Pygame. This step should be similar no matter which operating system you are using. Open terminal and type pip. If you don't have it installed, try typing pip3. For detailed instructions how to include pip in our Python installation, you can watch my first video on PyQt5 series. When you have working pip command, you can finally install Pygame. Type pip or pip3 depending on the alias you have installed and then install Pygame. While Pygame is installing, you can scroll down below in the video and smash that like button. Now let's continue. We will make sure that we install Pygame by running some examples. Type python3-m pygame.examples.aliens as you can see, it opens an example of pre-made game with Pygame. Now we can start with developing our own game. As I mentioned before, we will be making world's hardest game. We will start by explaining basics of Pygame's components and continue creating a simple player movement which will be limited to window boundaries so that our player won't be able to leave the screen. For programming, I will use Python's idle, but you can use whichever editor suits you best. I will create a new file and name it game.py. First thing we need is to import pygame. Then we have to initialize pygame. We also have to set screen width and screen height. I will set width to 800 and height to 600. This is in pixels. Then we will define our screen pygame.display.setMode and then as argument we set a tuple of our screen width and screen height. Now for the end of our game we will quit pygame, so pygame.quit. Now we can save our game and run it by pressing F5 or going to the menu, run and run module. As you can see, we were able to see our game window only for a fraction of a second, and this is because we haven't created our game loop yet. Game loop is main part of our game, where all necessary conditions will be checked, for example user inputs, object collisions and so on, and also where we are going to draw our game objects. We will initialize a new variable called isRunning, which will check if we still want to run our game in each iteration of a game loop. And now we will start our loop with while isRunning. And then inside our while loop we will loop through Pygame's events. The event that we are currently looking for is quit, which means that user wants to close the game. If this event is triggered, we have to stop our game loop with setting a variable is running to false. Now we can save our code and run it. 
As you can see, the game window now stays open, and when we close it, the app itself stops as well. Even though we have a running game screen, we are still missing the main part, the player. We are lucky that the world's hardest game doesn't have complicated graphics, so we just need to draw some squares and circles. We will begin with drawing simple red square, which will represent our player. To draw a square with pygame, we have to type pygame.draw.rect, and rect is the function which represents rectangle, and first argument of 3 that will pass to rectangle function will be screen. The second one will be color, which is in this case represented as the RGB system, which means that we are passing a tuple of three elements. The first one is value for color red, the second one is value for color green, and the third one is the value for color blue. So we want to pass only for the value red 255. The last one and the third argument of a function for rectangle will be where we want to position our player and what's the size of this player. So we are passing a tuple of four values. First is value x, second is value y. So this is where we want to position our player. And the third and the fourth value are the width and height. Another thing you have to know with Pygame is that the coordinate system starts 0, 0 at the top left corner. So I will put as a value x 50 and as, as a value y 50. I will also add height and width, both value of 10. If you run our game now, you will see that nothing changes. This is because we have to update our display after drawing new objects. So add pygame.display.update. And now we can see our player on the screen. And now we want to move our player. We will be moving it with arrow keys from the keyboard. So we have to find a way with Pygame how to check those inputs. We will type keys is equal to pygame.key.getPressed, which will populate the array of keys with all keys that are currently pressed. And now we have to set conditions for each key. So we want to set a condition for left key, right key, up key and down key. And for now, for each of these keys we will just print the direction that player should go. Later on we will change his position. Now pay attention to the idle's console which will be printing out the way the player should move. And now when I'm pressing the arrow keys, you can see the lock in the idle, where it's saying me in which direction to go. Currently we are drawing our game player outside the main loop, which means it won't be updated according to inputs. First, we can move the screen update to the end of the loop. And then draw the player after we check for the inputs of the keyboard. We also have to specify the position values for the player in separated variables, so we will be able to change them according to the user input. I will define x with value of 50 and y also with value of 50. Then we can replace the print function with editing x and y variables and we have to define velocity of the player as well. Then we can remove our print statements in each condition of the key. So for key left, we want to subtract velocity from value of x. And for the key right, we want to add velocity to the value of x. For key down, we want to add velocity to the player's y variable. And for the key up, we want to subtract y variable by player's velocity. Now we can save and run our game. As you can see, our player is actually moving, but is leaving a trail and moving really fast, which is not the functionality we want. We can fix the speed issue with setting a delay on each loop iteration. 
so everything happens with a delay of specific amount of milliseconds. We will add pygame.time.delay and the first argument will be 50, which means that we are running each iteration every 50 milliseconds. The trail behind the player can be fixed with coloring our background black on start of each iteration of main loop. So screen dot fill and first argument is RGB tuple because we want it to be black. We will put each value to zero. Now we can finally run the game. As you can see, we can finally move our player as we wanted. The only problem we have now is that the player can move out of the screen as well, which is not the functionality we want, but we will fix that in next episode. So that was it for this episode. We have somewhat of a working game right now, but we will work on polishing that game in next episode. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to stay tuned for the next episode when we'll be adding some more advanced features. Don't forget to subscribe, like, turn that bell on, and I'll see you guys in next one.